Hi, and welcome along to this first video in our new series on Kubernetes security fundamentals. What we are going to do throughout this series is take a look at various aspects of Kubernetes and Kubernetes security, how they work, and how you can help improve the security of your Kubernetes clusters. In this first video, what I wanted to do before we get into some of the technical details is talk a little bit about why Kubernetes security can be a bit of a tri tricky topic to talk about some of the complexities and some of the things that we'll need to think about as we go through the later videos. The first thing to think about is when I say Kubernetes security, what exactly am I talking about? There's quite a lot of variety in Kubernetes and different distributions of Kubernetes we need to think about. Let's talk a bit more about that. Essentially, Kubernetes, whilst there is the open source project, when you use it, you'll typically use a package distribution or service from a vendor. At the moment, there are a large number, over 100 different ones of these distribution services or installers. We've got 22 installers, which are things which install vanilla Kubernetes. There's 52 services. These are managed services where you essentially get access to an installed managed version of Kubernetes for you. And then 58 distributions, which are things that you can install on premises or in a cloud, but you manage them essentially yourself. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety. Whilst sometimes we can talk about things which are common across all of these, in other cases, it'll actually depend which distribution you're using as to what your specific things like security defaults are. So it's something that's very much worth being aware of when you are thinking about securing it. And also when you're reading things like Kubernetes security standards, be aware they can't really take account of that variety. So typically they'll look at the base vanilla distribution of Kubernetes and its settings. Another aspect of Kubernetes security that's important to know about when you're talking about what you can and can't do is managed distributions against unmanaged. In an unmanaged distribution, you essentially manage and install all of the components of Kubernetes yourself. You install the operating systems, and you typically install then on top of that, the Kubernetes components. And you can see on this diagram, you're essentially responsible for things like the configuration of the, and setup of the control plane. We've then got managed Kubernetes distributions. These are things like Amazon EKS, Google GKE, or Microsoft AKS, where essentially a lot of that is handled for you. Specifically, the management of the control plane is handled for you. So you don't have to worry about exactly how to configure those components, but also there's gonna be limited opportunities for you to configure them. So you are somewhat restricted in what you can do. And the third column or third type to be aware of is essentially managed serverless distributions. Here we're talking about things like GKE Autopilot, where essentially the cloud provider will handle configuration of the worker nodes as well. So you've got less, again, to worry about, but also less control. So when we're talking about through the rest of these uh, um, videos that we've got, we'll be looking at some places where that will affect what you can and can't do, and also what settings you've got. The last thing to think about when we're talking about Kubernetes security is what actually is included in Kubernetes security. There's a lots of different topics that we could discuss. By itself, the base project provides us some facilities and settings, but that you have generally have to add a lot of additional areas on top of that. For the series of this video, we've picked out these areas as ones we're going to look at. There are others, but we thought these are good ones to start and to focus on. And so what we'll be doing is in the next videos, we'll start going through these areas, starting with component API security and looking at them in more depth and detail. All of these videos will be coming up on our channel and they obviously are accompanied by blogs on our Security Labs website. So if you're looking for more detail, Security Labs is the place to go. In our next video, as I said, we'll be kicking off with component API security, and I very much look forward to seeing you there.